Ori, a student at Evergreen College and a member of the Olympia Movement for Justice and Peace, traveled to the Gaza Strip in Palestine in early 2003 as a volunteer with the International Solidarity Movement. On March 16, 2003, she was killed when she was run over by a caterpillar bulldozer while trying to block the destruction of a Palestinian home. The bulldozer was driven by an Israeli, but built in the United States. The driver could not have failed to see Corey, who was wearing a bright orange jacket and who announced her presence through a bullhorn. After her death, Corey's family and friends released copies of her moving letters describing the struggle against the U.S.-backed occupation of Palestinian lands. Here's one of the letters she sent home. Hi, friends and family and others. I have been in Palestine for two weeks and one hour now and I still have very few words to describe what I see. It is most difficult for me to think about what's going on here when I sit down to write back to the United States, something about the virtual portal into luxury. I don't know if many of the children here have ever existed without tank shell holes in their walls and the towers of an occupying army surveying them constantly from the near horizons. I think, although I'm not entirely sure, that even the smallest of these children understand that life is not like this everywhere. An eight-year-old was shot and killed by an Israeli tank two days before I got here, and many of the children murmur his name to me, Ali, or point at the posters of him on the walls. The children also love to get me to practice my limited Arabic by asking me, Kaif Sharon, Kaif Bush. And they laugh when I say, Bush Majnoon, Sharon Majnoon, back in my limited Arabic. How is Sharon? How is Bush? Bush is crazy. Sharon is crazy. <laughs> of course, this isn't quite what I believe. And some of the adults who have the English correct me. Bush Mishmajnoon. Bush is a businessman. <laughs> Today I tried to learn to say Bush is a tool, but I don't think it translated quite right. <laughs> but anyway, there are eight-year-olds here, much more aware of the workings of the global power structure than I was just a few years ago. Nevertheless, no amount of reading, attendance at conferences, documentary viewing, and word of mouth could have prepared me for the reality of the situation here. You just can't imagine it unless you see it. And even then, you are always well aware that your experience of it is not at all the reality. What with the difficulties the Israeli army would face if they shot an unarmed U.S. citizen and with the fact that I have money to buy water when the army destroys wells, and the fact, of course, that I have the option of leaving. Nobody in my family has been shot driving in their car by a rocket launcher from a tower at the end of a major street in my hometown. I have a home. I am allowed to go see the ocean. When I leave for school or work, I can be relatively certain that there will not be a heavily armed soldier waiting halfway between Mud Bay and downtown Olympia at a checkpoint with the power to decide whether I can go about my business and whether I can get home again when I'm done. As an afterthought to all this rambling, I am in Rafa, a city of about 140,000 people approximately 60% of whom are refugees, many of whom are twice or three times refugees. Today, as I walked on top of the rubble where homes once stood, Egyptian soldiers called to me from the other side of the border, go, go, because a tank was coming, and then waving, and what's your name? Something disturbing about this friendly curiosity it reminded me of how, some, how much, to some degree, we are all kids, curious about other kids. 
Egyptian kids shouting at strange women wandering into the path of tanks. Palestinian kids shot from the tanks when they peek out from behind walls to see what's going on. International kids standing in front of tanks with banners. Israeli kids in the tanks anonymously, occasionally shouting and also occasionally waving. Many forced to be here, many just aggressive, shooting into the houses as we wander away. I've been having trouble accessing news about the outside world here, but I hear an escalation of war on Iraq is inevitable. There is a great deal of concern here about the reoccupation of Gaza. Gaza is reoccupied every day to various extents, but I think the fear is that the tanks will enter all the streets and remain here instead of entering some of the streets and then withdrawing after some hours or days to observe and shoot from the edges of the communities. If people aren't already thinking about the consequences of this war for the people of the entire region, then I hope you will start. <laughs>